is Other Than a World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and we just passed the Christmas weekend and hope you had a very Merry Christmas. Now tonight you are joining us on a special Christmas edition of World News Tonight where we will be taking you around the world and how they celebrated Christmas. Now we start off the night at the Holy Land itself where Christian worshippers packed a Christmas morning mass service in the West Bank town of Bethlehem, revered by the traditional birthplace of Jesus. The Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem led the service attended by locals as well as Christian pilgrims from around the world. After two years of COVID-19 closures, some of the worshippers wore protective masks for the Indian Mars but others attended the prayers without them. Despite a relatively big crowd that had gathered at the Bethlehem's manger square to greet Pizabala and watch marching bands, the numbers were still a far cry from the 3.5 million visitors who came to Bethlehem in winter 2019, just before the pandemic. Now, as the Holy Land sees devout believers file through the chapels and halls, their neighbours up north Lebanon are celebrating the Christmas holiday season under the worst economic crisis in the country. But the holiday has offered a respite from the difficult circumstances and a chance for the community to come together to celebrate. In spite of the ongoing economic and political turmoil in Lebanon, the people have not let dampen the festive atmosphere. In the heart of Beirut, the city is alive with festive decorations and the joyous sound of Christmas celebrations. The annual Christmas market is bustling with activity, offering a warm and welcoming atmosphere for both adults and children to revel the joy of the season. Residents were joyous seeing Beirut come back to life, especially with small business owners who are struggling to show the beautiful face of Beirut and to communicate the fact that they are united no matter what happens. The businesses at the festive market are experiencing a successful season and are eager to host similar events throughout the year. Business owners said the holiday season this year is better than last year and there is a little overcrowding, but they hope that these events will continue permanently and not be limited to the festive season. These celebrations come under the worst economic crisis the country has witnessed in its history. Many depositors in the country have lost access to bank saving accounts, while the Lebanese lira plunged into unprecedented levels. Despite all the economic hardships, Beirut is celebrating Christmas. The people there are hoping for stability and a better situation to bring back the joy to an exhausted country. Meanwhile, over in our neighbouring India, Christmas worship was well underway as the Christian community in India celebrated across the country after two years of quiet festivities owing to the deadly coronavirus pandemic. Locals in New Delhi and southern Chennai cities offered prayers at churches during the midnight mass while some were seen enjoying the festivities with music and dancing. Meanwhile, nuns from Mother Teresa's Missionaries of Charity in eastern Kolkata city prayed to mark the occasion. Christmas is celebrated with much pomp and show and also by preparing special dishes for the day across India. Celebration of Christmas is marked by carols, cakes, candles, glittering Christmas trees and the exchange of gifts. The Christmas spirit was brought to life across many landmarks with the help of illumination and some festive flair. Now there was hustle and bustle at the Christmas market in Shanghai. The power of Christmas overpowered obligations as people defied calls to stay at home this weekend to curb the spread of COVID-19. While almost all visitors had masks on, there was no social distance as they strolled shoulder to shoulder along the shopping street decorated with Christmas lights and festive ornaments. Christmas is not traditionally celebrated in China, but it is common to young couples and some families to spend the holiday together. Despite the rising warnings of infections and deaths caused by the COVID pandemic, citizens dare to walk along streets to enjoy the festivities while some choose to silently revel the birth of Christ. Ukrainians will create their own miracle this Christmas, President Volodymyr Zelensky says by remain, reminding Unbowed despite Russian attacks, they have plunged millions into darkness. In the past, Ukrainian Christians mostly celebrated Christmas in early January. This year, the holiday is celebrated by many on December 25th, as Ukraine's main Orthodox Church has broken with Moscow and turns its face towards the West. 
On Christmas Eve, as Ukrainian Catholics gathered to celebrate in the Latin Cathedral in the western city of Lviv, the electricity was off, the consequence of the recent waves of Russian missile strikes on the country's power grid. Residents in Ukrainian folk costumes sang Christmas carols inside a metro station in Kyiv during an air raid alarm. Despite the continuing conflict, miracles did take place this Christmas with soldiers being allowed to reunite with their families, be it through phone or even physically, a rare occurrence with the current events. Soldiers also attended the morning Christmas mass in Kharkiv to commemorate the day. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has triggered the most deadly conflict in Europe since World War II, killing tens of thousands and displacing millions. Putin was speaking in an interview aired by the Russian state television regarding the onslaught with no end in sight, Ukraine cautiously saying Merry Christmas under the sound of sirens. Now, along with Pope Francis in his traditional Christmas message, has appealed for an end to senseless war in Ukraine and other conflicts, calling for an end to the use of food and weapons of war. Delivering the 10th Christmas Urbit or Orbi, blessing and message of his pontificate, the head of the Roman Catholic Church on Sunday also urged people to look beyond the shallow holiday glitter and help the homeless, immigrants, refugees and the poor in their mid-seeking comfort, warmth and food. He spoke just hours after air raid sirens wailed across Ukraine and the day after Ukrainian officials said a Russian attack on the recently liberated city of Kherson killed at least 10 people and wounded dozens. The Pope again condemned the use of food as a weapon of war, saying the war in Ukraine had put millions at risk of famine, mentioned in Afghanistan and countries in the Horn of Africa. In the splendor of St. Peter's Basilica, Pope Francis presided over the evening Christmas Mass attended by more than 7,000 faithful on Saturday. Traditionally, Catholics mark Christmas Eve by attending Mass at midnight. But over the years, the starting time has crept forward, reflecting the health or stamina of the Pope. Since COVID, the start of the service was moved to 7.30 p.m. local time. And Christmas tourism has returned to Bethlehem in the West Bank. Revered in Christian tradition as the birthplace of Jesus Christ, the town usually welcomes thousands of pilgrims and tourists for Christmas every year. This year, the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem led the annual Christmas Eve procession attended by Mahmoud Abbas, leader of the State of Palestine. Members of the community of Sant'Egidio organized a traditional Christmas lunch for Rome's needy and poor. Volunteers serves lasagna and other traditional food to people in the stunning setting of the Church of Santa Maria. Volunteers said that they all gathered here in harmony and peace with themselves and others and that the tradition is a beautiful initiative that has existed for 40 years. Thanking God, it exists. The Rome-based slave movement of Sant'Egidio was found in the late 1960s and has been nominated several times for the Nobel Peace Prize for its work with the poor. The Vatican Secretary of State, Cardinal Pietro Paralin, arrived at the church to share lunch and joy with the needy. After the meal, guests toasted Christmas with champagne as they opened their gifts. Christians in Rome celebrated with grace and generosity alongside the needy in true festive spirit. Let's go into a short commercial break. Stay with us. We'll be back with more news. Welcome back. Now, King Charles has used his first Christmas message to reflect on the cost of living crisis. He spoke to the great anxiety and hardship for those struggling to pay their bills and keep their families fed and warm. There were images of food banks and help for the homeless alongside the speech recorded by the King in St. George's Chapel in Windsor. He paid tribute to his mother Queen Elizabeth, who is buried in the chapel. The late Queen pioneered the Television Royal Christmas Day Address and used what was to become her final message last year to speak of passing the baton to the next generation. The themes of the King's speech touched on some of his cause and beliefs, concerns of the disadvantage and importance of public service in supporting a multi-faith approach to religion. Only working royals appeared on screen in the King's broadcast, including the Queen's consort, the Prince and Princess of Wales, the Earl of Wessex and the Princess Royal. 
That meant that Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, were not mentioned. The Duke of York was also not included. At a time of industrial strife, the financial pressures, the King's message focused on those supporting people in need. It was a Christmas filled with firsts as the royal family, led by King Charles, arrived at Sandrium this morning for church service. The Prince and Princess of Wales walking in with their three children, including Prince Louis, an experience he's never had until now. This is the first Christmas for the family and the kingdom without Queen Elizabeth. Absent today, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, the couple sparking controversy with their recent Netflix documentary. Doesn't it make more sense to hear our story from us? But tonight, all eyes were on King Charles and his first Christmas address to the nation. I cannot thank you enough for the love and sympathy you have shown our whole family. A speech recorded at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, close to where his mother, the late queen, was laid to rest. Christmas is a particularly poignant time for all of us who have lost loved ones. King Charles acknowledging those struggling across the world. Be it for those around the world facing conflict, famine or natural disaster, or for those at home finding ways to pay their bills and keep their families fed and warm. But the king offering optimism for better days ahead. We can find hope for the future. Let us therefore celebrate it together and cherish it always. One day before Germans traditionally celebrated Christmas, some 44,000 soccer fans gathered at Cologne's sports stadium on St. Carol's during an event known in local jargons as Let's Sing Christmas Carols. The event, which premiered in 2015, is seen as an emotional highlight on the fans of 1FC Kolin and their families according to the club, which is currently placed 13th out of 18 in the Bundesliga table. Cologne's event was cancelled in 2020 and 2021 due to the coronavirus restrictions. Visitors who had brought their tickets two years ago said that it was crazy yet beautiful to think that so many people would get together at a stadium for this event. Donning Santa hats, cheering squads said that the event was beautiful. The joyful anticipation was so much bigger this time than in the past years because there was something missing at it simply a part of Christmas and had a special feel to it. There is nothing like caroling in folklore clothes and watching goat and bear dances on Christmas in Romania topped off with delicious traditional pork dishes. Romanians consider men to bring good luck, therefore in some villages the first carol singers are men and girls need to wait for their turn to come. Carolers in some regions wear hideous handcrafted masks and large bells to ward off the old year. Donning bear costumes from head to toe, crews of performers dance through the streets at the rhythm of drums and the sound of traditional Romanian whistles. With their chants and dances, the performers are saying goodbye to the old year and welcoming the new. Actors and musicians entertained visitors to Slovenia Cave performing a recreation of the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. Visitors can watch the story told in 16 scenes strung along 5 kilometers underground in Postenia Cave in Slovenia's southwest. Around 100 local actors put on the show, which is also illuminated by more than 2,100 coloured lights, according to the cave's website. Show organisers said that they were working towards getting the performance inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List and that it was the 32nd time the show had been performed in the cave. U.S. President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden visited the Children's National Hospital in Washington and met with pediatric patients and their families and hospital staff. First ladies traditionally visit the hospital around the Christmas holiday, dating back to the First Lady Bess Truman during the post-Second World War presidency of Harry Truman. Last year, President Biden made the trip, marking the first time a sitting president made a holiday visit to Children's National. The President and the First Lady hosted a book reading of the snowy day with a group of pediatric patients, including some who participated virtually from their hospital room. This year marks the 60th anniversary of the publishing of Ezra Jack Keats' book, The Snowy Day. Both the President and the First Lady wore masks as required by the hospital. 
Meanwhile, in the south, Florida surfing Santas came out in their hundreds at Cocoa Beach despite unseasonable cold temperatures at a winter storm grips the United States. The surfing Santas, many in wetsuits, took to the waves as they took part in the annual Christmas Eve event, cheered on by a crowd of onlookers. Since its inception, the Cocoa Beach Surfing Santas event has raised more than $300,000 for two local non-profits, Grind of Life and the Florida Surf Museum. The Grind of Life organization provides financial assistance to cancer patients and their families when traveling long distances to doctors and hospitals. And the Florida Surf Museum preserves and documents all aspects of the unique history and culture of Florida surfing through exhibits and events. The lights and displays move from one nation to the next as dazzling onlookers take in all the sparkling lights in the Lantern Festival in Chile's capital with over 30 lantern installations at Family Park in Santiago. 41 artisans created light sculptures of animals, flowers and mythological beings. The Festival of Lights boasted a vibrant Christmas display with giant snowmen and sleighs illuminating the path. The Christmas displays put on a Chinese theme to all celebrate the Chile-China relationship. Rudolph was not the only thing lighting the way as onlookers stopped to appreciate the magnificent artistry. Now, while other countries are enjoying a snowy white Christmas cozy and indoors, locals and tourists alike flock to Bondi Beach on Sunday for the Australian tradition of celebrating Christmas in the sun. With cold weather and storms hitting various countries in the Northern Hemisphere, tourists were making the most of the hot weather down under. Tourists said that they are really glad to be on white sand instead of snow and can't choose a better place to be. Volunteer lifeguards donned in Santa hats kept a watchful eye over surfers enjoying the waves and the seasonal spirit. This year marks the first Christmas since the pandemic started without significant restrictions or lockdowns across the country and the first Christmas since international borders opened. We have come to the end of tonight's special Christmas edition and in case you missed watch any of the stories, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Now we are wrapping up tonight with marvellous decorations and sparkling lights that illuminate all across the world in celebration of Christmas. We'll be back again tomorrow with World News. Stay safe and have a good night.